So as we dive into this review really quickly, the first thing I want to look at is a quick pros and cons. So I've completed a pros and cons when I bought my machine based on an HCA lance like this system that we have here versus the Zirocco hammer jet, which I've just laid down here on the ground. So the system we use is a small portable system because we don't use the lorries uh, and the large, well, large sort of HCAs. So I've based it purely on this. This may be similar to what you're using and you'll see in my pros and cons why it relates specifically to this in comparison to the Zirocco. So let me show you what we have here. So on the HCA Lance side, I've written a few pros and a few cons and let me explain what they are. So the pro of the HCA Lance is we have a propane tank that goes on here. It's a 19 kilo tank and uh, that gives us a really good runtime of around four hours, I would say, at full speed before we use that 19 kilo tank up. At around about 10 pounds uh, per hour, I think, running cost, it's around 36 to 40 quid uh, for a 19 kilo uh, propane tank. Next is line removal. So for an HCA Lance, this one is a bit too small. So you see the sort of size we're using here. This one's a little bit too small for line removal. It's not quite powerful enough for that. Um, but the large ones that you have on the lorries um, or towables, they can be used for line removal and that is a pro, massive one. The next one is cost. So to buy an HCA Lance like this here, it'll set you back a couple of thousand pounds. This one here, we bought for three and a half thousand pounds. Now I appreciate there are cheaper ones on the market, but that's what we paid and we're using that for our comparison here. The next is the service. Now, arguably there's not a great deal to service on these machines. So as if I, uh, if I come around the side here, you know, we've got an air filter on the side. This one's actually just been broken uh, just before I'm filming this, unfortunately. Uh, but air filters, they're, you know, five, 10 pounds. Oil to go in here is about 10 pounds worth. There's an air filter, which to be honest, we just clean with oil. Um, and then you may change a spark plug. Uh, that is pretty much it for the service. So the service cost will set you back about 20, 25 pounds. So those are the um, pros that I have for an HCA Lance. Next is the cons. Now trailing hoses is a big one for me and one of the reasons I really don't like HCA Lances like this, uh, you know, specifically is these hoses. Now this hose in particular must be I don't know, three, four meters long, maybe five meters long. Um, I don't like trailing hoses like this. They're a trip hazard, they're dangerous. Um, there's no need for it. You know, it's, it's increased risk. I don't think you need it. So massive con for me is the trailing hoses. Now, this is a small one. If you're using one on the back of a lorry um, or a towable HCA, then yours are gonna be much longer, I'll bet, and uh, a bigger trip hazard, and I don't think that's necessary. Next is the open flame. Uh, this one has an open flame on it, and again, I don't see the need or the point in an open flame, and it's a massive con for me, so I really don't like that. Next is qualifications. Now, some companies will make you do a qualification before you can use an HCA Lance. Some clients will, will insist you do some, whether it's an in-house course or an external provider giving you the course qualifications. Next is the skill it's needed to use. Now, arguably, people have been using these systems uh, for the past 50 years, well, longer, I'll bet, and um, they'll argue that this is, you know, the way people do it, it's nice and easy. Um, as you light your torch, it's just sort of moving it along the ground very slowly, um, but it takes time. It, there's, a, there's a lot of skill involved to really get the best out of that and to do it right. So that skill takes time. Next is the public and client perception. Um, you know, when, when your clients see you on site and they see you using something like this, they may be okay with it and they may think, well, that's, you know, the way they've always done it, um, I guess that's it. But when they see another company come along who might use something else, uh, like for example, a turbine dryer, like this system we have here, your clients might start to wonder, are they really using the best system or is there a better alternative available? What's the difference? Um, and I think public and client perception is a big one that people don't consider, but I assure you it's important, it really is. At least I think it's very important. Next, we're gonna look at the transport cost. Now the transport, sorry, not the transport cost, the ease of transport with these things. Now this is a really small one we're using in our comparison here. This is, you know, this is actually taking up less room than the Zirocco Hammerjet. This flight case is about 1.5 meters 
Uh, this arguably is about a meter, so it's smaller um, and it weighs around about the same. So transport, I put as a neutral. Um, it's not great, it's not bad. It's, it's just neutral, you know? Access is a bit of a con. Um, these things can go most places, but some places, you know, certainly that we've been to, getting permission to have an open flame using an HCA lance like this is hard work. So sometimes, you know, it's just not practical. People just don't want you to do it. The next one here though, is also the uh, staff cost to operate. So to operate a machine like this, if I just put this down on here and show you, um, to operate this machine, we have one person holding our lance who will be drying the line over here, for example. We have another person holding on our trolley and pulling the trolley backwards and forwards wherever we're drying. Now, these motors are mounted directly onto uh, the frame here. So as I move this down, our motor, for example, is bolted directly onto the steel frame, which means all the vibration goes through your arms and it is very fatiguing whether you're pushing this thing or whether you're holding onto the lance, it's really fatiguing. Um, so you need two staff members to operate this thing and I've put down there's a cost um, consideration for that as well. And then lastly, a neutral point for me is the noise. The HCA lance is a noisy piece of equipment, um, but there's arguably no way of reducing that noise uh, sensibly. So to clarify, those are my pros and cons for the HCA lance. And that's what I considered when I looked at buying the Zirocco. As a running cost per hour, I've based mine on around 53 pounds an hour to operate an HCA lance. That's because I put two operatives on it and I, I have put down 20 pounds an hour as my running cost for my staff to take into account national insurance, pension, holidays, sickness, um, you name it. Everything that goes into it is around 20 pounds an hour. They've got vehicles as well. They get you know, whatever they get. If it's out of hours work, it might be time off in lieu as well. It rounds up to about there. I've then put down my propane cost. It's around 36 to 40 pounds for a 19 kilo uh, propane bottle. And then to buy this machine, we pay three and a half thousand pounds. So arguably you'd have a thousand usable hours out of this machine, which means you've got an hourly running cost of about three pounds 50, which brings you to 53 pounds per hour running the HCA Lance. Moving quickly on to our hammer jet, I've got our running cost at around 78 pounds an hour as I move this up here. Let me explain where that comes from. It's a 25 pound an hour increase, but don't be put off immediately by the fact that it costs a little bit more money. And I'll explain why. The pros massively outweigh the cons and the pros massively outweigh the pros of the HCA as well. So the pro for this one is speed. This Zirocco machine, let me put this down so you can see it here. Here it is. Um, I've taken the cover off. I'll show you in a second why. Um, this machine is fast. I mean, you can push it along at around two and a half kilometers an hour, which is about twice the speed of using an HCA lance. Um, so it is very, very quick. Next is the public perception, which we just discussed for the HCAs. I think a really poor public perception with these but when people see you turning up with some innovative technology, that means you haven't got trailing hoses, you haven't got trip hazards, you haven't got to have two operators using it, you haven't got open flames, the public or client perception is definitely improved. As is the safety, which is next on my pro list, is the safety. Again, you've eliminated those slips, trips and falls that are very likely to occur, or, or, or at least have a high probability with an HCA lance. Next, transport. Um, these things can be transported, but let me show you the size of this, this box it comes with. Now this box is 1.5 meters, give or take a centimeter or two. That is actually pretty big. Now I know the machine's weighing in around 23 kilos, but once you add your fuel into that machine, you add in your goggles, your paperwork, anything else you put in this flight box, it does become quite heavy. And I've seen videos of people saying that you can load this into the car or van by yourself. I'm gonna disagree on that one really because it is quite heavy. It, it's a two man lift to get it into site or into your vehicle. And one of my gripes with this machine, not, well, not with the machine as such, but I think as an afterthought for it uh, is wheels. So as you, as you look down here, I have fitted uh, just some wheels on the bottom of this flight case because 
it's so heavy and it's so awkward to maneuver around that it, it should have come with wheels on the flight case. Um, next on here is the access. Now this thing can basically access all areas. Let me show you, it, it's like mopping the floor with this thing. You can go anywhere. Um, literally, whether you're walking forward, turning on the spot, this thing will go everywhere you need it to go and it will go fast. These wheels uh, allow it to traverse any sort of rough terrain really easily unlike the, uh, your HCA Lance, which has got these really small um, steel wheels on, uh, which is just no great, uh, you know, over anything bumpy, it's awful. Um, this access also ties in with, with that maneuverability, which we just covered there. Next is the GPS and telematics. Now this part, I, if I'm honest, I didn't see the point of it until I really thought more about it. I thought, why is, why is this important? I get that it's a feature it comes with, but who cares? I don't know why the camera is looking over there. Now, I, I get the GPS comes with it, but I didn't understand why. I didn't see the value in that. And then when I started looking at it a bit more, I thought, well, I don't actually charge my clients for drying. I just, you know, if I have to dry the surface before we line mark, then so be it. I don't charge for it. It's part and parcel with the job. But now that I have a GPS tracking system and telemetrics, I can actually show my clients exactly where I've dried, how many linear meters I've dried, and I can now justifiably and comfortably charge my clients and say, well, this is additional equipment, additional cost, um, you know, in order to get your work completed. We, we've explained up front there might be, you know, a drying fee if we have to do forced drying. Um, and, it, you know, if we're going to use an HCA Lance and you weren't going to charge anyway, the fact that this one's £25 an hour more, um, and you've got that telemetrics means that you could actually, if you wanted to, you could charge your clients now for the drying that you've completed. So I do now understand the value and I see the value in having that telemetrics system or telematics system, sorry. Um, I see the value in that. And, and I think although it may cost more per hour to operate, you can offset that pretty quickly. I've made this cost up based on um, the operator at £20 an hour. That's, again, the same price that we're using for our operator for the HCA Lance, but I only need one person to run the Zorocco. £35 an hour, that is actually on the um, price of uh, the servicing. Now, the servicing I'm going to go through into in just a second because uh, that's another area that I think we need to talk about a bit more. Um, and then I've also got the fuel cost as well, which gives us uh, a £78 an hour. Now, arguably, we've also got to talk about the machine price itself, um, because that's what you guys are here for. That's what you want to know about. Is it worth buying? How much is it going to cost you? So we'll run into that in just a moment. The con list I've got on here is the short run time. This uh, Zorocco will run for around 15 to 25 minutes, uh, but then you'll need to stop and refuel. So you, you sort of almost need to plan your fuel stops because you're going to have to cool the machine down, top it up with fuel, wait for it to restart, whereas if you're using uh, an HCA Lance like this thing here, um, you don't have to stop and wait. The only thing that's gonna cause you to stop is the fatigue and the vibration. Another con, upfront cost. Now, this machine will, uh, it retails for 17,000 pounds as I speak. Uh, in the UK here, the only place you can buy this machine is with uh, Mion, based down in Portsmouth. I would suggest you give, give them a call or an email or, or something uh, if you wanna try one out. Um, they're around £17,000 plus the VAT. I've paid a little bit more for mine. I paid nearly 28, well, I did. I paid 28,200 because I bought it with the service packages and I took advantage of Mion's Machine Club. Um, next is the service cost itself. Now, the service is around £2,500 for the major service. That's on the turbine. However, what you also need to look at is the consumable service parts. So, as I've taken the cover off here, I'll show you. Um, uh, as we lift the filter off here, you've got inside a pre-filter and then the main air filter. So this is your pre-filter that you can see here, and then the main air filter is just underneath it. Now the pre-filter is around 12 pounds 50, I think, and is changed at the two and a half hour mark. The main air filter on the turbine there is 150 pounds and that needs to be changed every 25 hours, which means although your main service cost is only, um, you know, two and a half thousand pounds per hundred hours, I say only, that, 
again, I, it's a very specialist system. You, you, you almost got to expect that it's going to cost you a lot of money. I think that the service price on that is actually too much money. I don't, I, I don't see the justification for that much. I, you know, at the end of the day, it's a captive audience um, and you're sort of locked in with that. So I get it, but I feel the service cost is extortionate. Um, but then I'm not the one that has to build, design, maintain. These are probably made in very small batches and require some very specialist equipment to check and keep running right. So, you know, it feels expensive to me, but perhaps, you know, given the expertise and, and the equipment, like I just said, maybe it isn't that much. Um, but it certainly felt it to me. The consumable parts, though, by the time you add in the extra air filters you're going to need, you're going to add in another £600 to that price. So that two and a half jumps to £3,100. And then you're also going to add in the extra filters that you need to add in here. So budget around three and a half thousand pounds for your service. And of course, that brings me to the last point on here uh, for my con list, which is the downtime. So while this thing is being serviced, how long is that gonna take? Where's it gonna go? Does it go back to Denmark? Uh, does Mion do it for you? Uh, can they just send you a turbine and you swap it out yourself? Um, these are considerations you, 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 know, you need to look at because that downtime could be expensive for you if it's in the winter and uh, it could take days, it could take weeks. I have no idea. Looking on Zorocco's website, you can change the uh, turbine in just a few minutes, but that assumes you have a turbine to change. Um, in a neutral position here again, I've got noise. Now, while the uh, Zorocco Hammerjet is quieter than an HCA Lance, it is by no means a quiet system. And I don't see any way of really making it quieter without packing it full of insulation and probably extending that exhaust and even then, I think you just make it a hindrance to use. So that's my quick pros and cons list. I'm trying to keep this really brief for you. Um, pros and cons for the HCA, pros and cons for the Hammerjet. So next, what I wanted to show you here is just assembling your unit, uh, making sure it's ready to run. And we're gonna fit this hover nozzle on. Now I feel the hover nozzle itself um, could be slightly improved. Uh, but it's, to be honest, it's personal preference. There's no issue with it. It's just I feel it could have been made a bit easier. Let me show you what I mean on here. So this is uh, the front of the turbine that you've got here. And what you get is this uh, little steel collar, which you just want to put around here. And then you're going to line up your hover nozzle. So I find it easier actually to just grab the inside here and line it up like that. And then what I tend to do is put my knee underneath like this, so I can just hold it in place and then try and flip this little cover over. And there we go, it's on. All you've got to do now is tighten that up. However, I feel that could have been made easier if, for example, there were just a groove um, where it's slotted into and that would remove the uh, user error for when you're tightening it up. It would make it easier for the end user as well. Um, and let me show you what I mean by that. Because when, when, you, when you fit this nozzle on, what you actually have to do, if I just lay the camera down, you need to lift it back up again and tighten this up. But in order to tighten it up, you need to make sure the nozzle is level on the ground. So what we do is push it forward. That'll level it up for us. And then we use the, uh, the ratchet spanner that's been provided just to tighten that up for us. The next thing I want to look at is the center of gravity because I feel the center of gravity. Let me show you what I mean. Let me put this on and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, I put that together. What I wanted to talk about next was the center of gravity and where I think a minor improvement could be made, but equally I also understand why it's been built the way it's been built. So let me show you what I mean. At the minute the machine's put together, it is ready, uh, ready to start work. Now, I usually prep my equipment when I get to site so that I'm ready to start as soon as I get the get-go. Uh, sometimes you're waiting on site for that. So, at the minute, I put everything together, I filled it up with fuel, the nozzle's on, battery's in. And the problem I see here is the weight distribution now. So, the weight now is further towards the back. Um, which means when you've got the machine filled like this ready to go, you have to leave it lying down. 
Now that's not really a problem, it's personal preference. And I say that because I worry someone's gonna trip over and break my screen or they're just gonna trip over the machine in general um, and it becomes a trip hazard. I would much rather be able to leave the machine propped up like this. But there's only two ways you could do that. One of them is to move the wheels further backwards. But if you did do that, you, you'd, you'd move that center of gravity um, and, and the displacement there. But what would happen is the front nozzle would be hitting the ground because your wheels are further back. You displace that gravity and it would actually scrape along the ground and it wouldn't give you a very good dry at all. And it would just damage the, uh, the, the hover nozzle. So the only other way I think you could do it is perhaps just fitting a small um, drop down arm on the back here, just literally clip in and that would allow it to sit in the upright position. Now I understand why Mion, um, uh, why Zirocco, sorry, have uh, built it this way. Uh, this is the most stable way to keep the equipment. Um, no two ways about that, I understand it. Again, just personal preference, I think that's what I would have liked to have seen and it's something that I think we're going to add to our one um, just for personal preference, but it doesn't in any way hinder the machine or its use. So at the end of the day, you guys are here for one thing really, and that is to decide whether or not it is worth spending the money on a brand new system to dry surfaces. And I can't make that decision for you, but I can tell you that when I made that decision, it wasn't that hard for me to make. I looked at the technology we had, the systems we had, the processes, I thought they were outdated, they were dangerous, and they could be drastically improved. But that said, this was not a quick purchase. I spent months going through uh, online, finding other systems similar to this, looking at websites, looking at Zorocco's website. I even emailed Brian and asked him questions about it. I went onto Mion's website, and I tried to find other uh, videos on YouTube and LinkedIn where people had used this system and to, to get some feedback and no one really gave any sort of feedback on it the way I wanted and the way I needed and so I made that decision myself and said you know what actually I'm going to take the chance on this because I want to be at the very front of this line marking industry. I want to be part of the innovation and development of the industry as it changes and moves forward and I believe it's always changing and moving forward like every industry and if you are not part of that change, if you are not forward thinking, you're gonna get left behind. And I wanted to be at the front of that. So I made the decision to invest the money. I spent 28,180 pounds buying a system, not knowing if it would work. I didn't demo it beforehand, but I strongly suggest you guys do demo it. Uh, in the UK, you can ask me on, they will gladly do a demo for you. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is a quick race. So what I've thought is we've got about 100 meters straight of concrete outside and we are gonna see how long it takes to dry that 100 meters straight. And you tell me what you think it takes you to dry with an HCA Lance. I'm gonna dry it with the Zirocco. I'm gonna pull this outside and I'm just gonna grab some footage. Tell me what you think. We're about wrapped up in the review. Thank you very much for watching. I know it ran on for about half an hour there. I just wanted to highlight some of the things I really, really love about this machine and hopefully you guys share the same too. So the first up is the telematics. Now that we have the ability to track our drying, we, we have a way of actually being able to charge for that as an add-on service and we can also offset the cost of this machine versus the HCA Lance because of that system. 
Next up are the wheels. Those wheels, I mean, we were line marking the other day in the train station and uh, it was that bobbly concrete stuff and you know, trying to push an HCA over that, even the mobile portable ones that we've got, they're a nightmare. But with the wheels on this machine, it is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, next was the maneuverability. Uh, this thing will traverse anything, it'll turn on a dime. It is absolutely spot on, on uh, in terms of maneuverability. Next one is, the, there's a new nozzle coming out. It's a W nozzle. It may well be released already as soon as I find out uh, from Mion. Um, hopefully I'll be able to try it at Mion's Expo coming up in a few weeks time and I'll let you guys know what I think of that. And last but not least, dealer support. You know when you buy a new car, um, or any vehicle for that matter of fact, um, you're always concerned about dealer support. Are there parts available? Can you, know, can you get them easily? Are they easy to talk to? And one thing I've found so far, uh, you know, you've got me on here in the UK, but you've also got Zorocco in Denmark. And they have been so communicative so far, it's been fantastic. And I feel that that dealer support, you know, whether it's parts, technical queries, online support, you know, there's even an online training system for using this machine. So I feel that the, the support and backup is so good for this machine. Um, and hopefully you guys can see that too. Thanks again for watching. Hope it was really, really helpful for you guys. Take care. Thanks.